Hey everyone, it's Gan from Peppy's Tech Suite, and today we'll be looking at how the ray tracing presets compare to the other graphics presets on the PC version of Cyberpunk 2077. Keep in mind that all these were played at 1440p capped at 60fps and that this video will be spoiler free. Of course, Cyberpunk is a very beautiful and very resource hungry game, and Night City is perfect to show off the graphical and ray tracing settings uh, for a game like this. With ray tracing, some of the biggest differences are seen in the lighting, reflections, and shadows. So we'll be focusing mostly on that aspect uh, in these examples. So first, let's start off with the low preset without ray tracing. And here we can see that it looks fine at a first glance, but once you take a closer look at it, we can see some minor issues. The reflections are okay, but they're not very accurate. I mean, look underneath this advertisement, for example. Next, let's look at the medium settings. Immediately, we can see a big bump in the environment and especially the reflections. The issue with the advertisement is improved, but it's still not perfect. Uh, lens flares have been added and it looks a lot better. The difference between low and medium is probably the most drastic change we'll see between these other graphics presets. And obviously, there is now the issue of the reflections changing based on where you're looking. Switching it up to high, once again, there's a noticeable change in reflection quality and environments, but that same issue of the reflections changing based on where you're looking remains. At Ultra, it looks even better. As we turn around, we can start seeing how this entire area looks, and as the people walk by in the distance, we can see their shadows underneath them. Now, switching over to the first ray tracing preset, ray tracing medium, we can see that although the environment loses detail, the reflections look amazing. But you won't be seeing the full benefits of ray tracing until you switch to the ray tracing ultra preset. Immediately you can see much better details with amazing details in the reflections. We can see the details of the advertisement preserved in the reflection and same with the security guard in his reflection. And as we look around, you can tell that this is the quality that we expected when these ray tracing cards were introduced. But it's honestly a shame that most PC setups will have trouble running this preset at a reasonable frame rate. Of course, this preset has DLSS set at auto, but without it, this would probably be a choppy mess. Now here's how Ray Tracing Ultra compares to some of the other presets. Now let's switch over to another scene in the game. We'll see how these presets look at daytime by a body of water. Starting off at low settings, we can see that although this looks fine and is more than playable, there is still a lot of room for improvement. Switching over to medium, again the big difference is in the reflections of the water and the introduction of the lens flares. Like I mentioned earlier, the difference between low and medium is pretty substantial, as seen in the details and the reflections of the water. At high, we see even more details in the water reflection. We see more of the clouds being reflected, and the water is looking a lot better than at low, as seen here. Next, we switch to ultra settings, and we see further improvements in the reflections and in the shadows, and we can clearly see the reflection of the big holographic ads in Night City, and as you can tell, the game looks incredible. Switching over to ray tracing medium, we can see that we lose out in details in the reflections and the environment. It still looks great, but the ultra setting looks a lot better. And of course, the ray tracing ultra setting. As expected, this is by far the best looking preset in the game. If your computer can handle it, this is definitely the way to play the game.
Next, we switch to low settings on this road at nighttime. The main thing that sticks out immediately is the lack of detail in the bike tire, the road, and the missing shadow of the bike and V on the ground. Again, while completely playable, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Switching to medium, we see a big difference in the shadows all over. The lighting on the buildings in the background, and again, the introduction of the lens flares. And switching to high, we see improvements in lighting, the details in the environment and the character, and in the reflections. And at ultra, we see improvements in the shadows and in the reflections again. Next, we try ray tracing medium. Now here we see the expected loss of detail throughout and some minor yet noticeable differences in lighting and shadows. Lastly, with ray tracing ultra, once again, we get all the details back from ultra, but this time with better lighting, shadows and reflections throughout. And here is how it compares to some of the other presets. Finally, we'll check out this random intersection here, starting at the top with Ray Tracing Ultra. We can see the reflections in the puddle, V's shadow being cast by the headlights, and really nice lighting, shadow, and reflections throughout. Going straight to Ultra, we can see a major difference in the lighting and reflections, especially from the advertisement and the distant lights. The shadows and the details still look great though. Going down to high, we see a small loss in details and some of the reflections on the road are lost. At medium, we see a very subtle change in some of the lighting and the distant details. Lastly, at low, we lose a lot of shadows and reflections. Lots of details lost on the road, the characters, and the cars. We lose those light flares and V no longer has a shadow. I hope that helped you see some of the differences between the different graphic settings in Cyberpunk 2077. In terms of needing ray tracing, honestly most people won't notice the difference. The reflections, lighting, and shadows look great in this game even without ray tracing. If your computer can handle it, I would try to play at at least medium settings. That's where you get those lens flares coming in, you start getting shadows, and at that stage, that's when the game starts looking really good. I mean, those glitches and bugs will be there regardless of what settings you play at. But that's it for now. Subscribe for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.